Thank you, Felice. Um, you know, for me, I like, I really enjoy hearing what these folks are talking about and making references to church. That stuck out to me a lot because this is really has a lot of spiritual uh, connection to this building, to this, to the music. I guarantee you, I'm sure all of you are aware, there's going to be a lot of spiritual moments right here in this room that we're going to share, and it's conducive. You know, you look at it is like a church. You know, from here, it's like being. You know, I remember being an altar boy, and when you look out at the audience, it's like that. They're in your face, and as a musician. I personally, and I think most musicians feel this way, that are not rock musicians, uh, even they might, you know the rock musicians too, to a certain extent, love to have that proximity. It's, it's incredible to be able to just shake hands with the person in the front row. And, and too many places that we play, you know, the first row is over there. And you know, it's okay, but it's not the same. And just by bringing that front line up, up, right up in the front, that makes a big difference to us. That brings everybody closer. And the, the, to be able to look around and be able to see everybody's face, that's a, that makes a big difference. We, always, we talk about that. When we play venues that are like that, wherever in the world they are, we talk about that. We say, wow, you know, you could just, you know, somebody was sitting in the back and, you, and you, I, I saw such and such and such and such. And you can't do that in, in most rooms. Uh, that's a wonderful thing. The spiritual part, because jazz, of course, has its roots with a lot of uh, spiritual based music and blues, and there's going to be a lot of crying moments in this room, I can tell already. Beautiful moments. Um, another thing that's important is all the, all the care into the sound. I mean, that's all the things that Sam was talking about mean a great deal to us. Because I want to tell you that, unfortunately, the majority of the times we're on the stage, we have problems on the, on the stage, hearing ourselves and problems with this frequency and that frequency feeding back, and it's too boomy, and it's too this, and it's all that stuff. And it sounds like that's not going to be a problem. We'll, we'll, we'll know in a few minutes. But it, sounds like, it sounds like it's not going to be a problem. A lot of care has been taken into it. And I can tell just from the voices. Because in a room that's not right, just talking to you like this on the microphone, it, you, you, a lot of times you, you're like, you, you have to strain to hear. Because you don't hear the diction. That's important to be able to hear the diction of the, not only the voice, but the instruments. It's very important. And also, because you see all these busy bees like a honeycomb, the, all the workers that are still working out here running to get everything done. I asked the question this morning that I wanted to remind uh, whoever the powers that be that whoever was responsible for, for tightening the bolts on that thing right there <laughs> to remind them to do it. And Steve just quelled my fears by saying, don't worry about it because if it falls, you'll never know what hits you. <laughs> um, but I have to say also that with... Um, you know, it's been, it's been a, an honor to be associated with the festival, and uh, Randall, I have to tip my hat to you as well, everybody here, you know, has done it, but, you know, just the care that Randall has taken to make sure that education is, is tied in from the very beginning, and that jazz is represented in all of its colors, and it's not trying to define for anybody what is jazz, but instead presenting a, a wide array of music, because so much music has been influenced and born out of the root of what jazz is. It is our national art form. It, it's, it's generally disrespected in this country more than anywhere else. And so this is a, an incredible thing. It's a shrine. It is a church. It is a, a wonderful place. And it, and it has all those things. I think, you, I think my opinion is that you all achieved what you're going for. It, does, it doesn't stick out like a sore throat, but yet it's beautiful and it's remarkable, but it fits in. And we love all of that about it. From a musical standpoint, um, be, having the opportunity to present and collaborate and um, make uh, productions and you know, be creative about the programming it has always been something that I've been very uh, honored to be part of and, and happy, very happy that uh, Randall and, and the festival has always taken care to make that part of the festival. So this role as resident artistic director, I think is also, I'm not sure where that idea came from. Is that, or, is that from somewhere else, Randall, or did you think of that? That's you. Man. So that's, um, to me, that's, Wonderful. That, I mean, when you think about it, that really ex ex expands exponentially the programming because you get the programming from the perspective of artists, and it just it adds to the creativity that's happening here on every level. Um, the last thing I want to mention is just that um, you know, the it's a miracle. This is a, this is building is a miracle to me because you know I, I remember Randall talking about it. You know, and and you always wonder, yeah, okay, well, hopefully I'll live to see that. But, but, you know, when it starts coming together and you see that, you know, I mean, Randall's, you know, he's, he's, it's 30 years now, so if anybody has any doubts, 
you know, this, this San Francisco Jazz Festival now is really a world respected thing. It is arguably the number one jazz festival in the world. And it's certainly, certainly without doubt, not arguably one of the top couple. There's just a few that are in the world that are talked about by everybody. Everybody wants to come, everybody wants to play. And in San Francisco, a place like this, which is a destination anyway, the San Francisco Jazz Festival is right up there. To me, it's not, it's not, it's, it's, it, there's a Golden Gate Bridge, there's Quake Tower, there's the SM Jazz Festival. And now, with this center, it just fortifies that whole thing. And I want to just emphasize that it takes creativity. It's going to take creativity, as much creativity, from the audience, from the public, from the community, to make it work. Because it's a miracle to get it done in this kind of berserk economy that we live in, you know, the amount of money that it took to get this done, the amount of money it will take to keep it running. And now it has to be accepted because the community for jazz is not the same community as the as across the street, as, as the uh, you know, the ballet and the opera and the symphony. And yet we deserve, jazz deserves to have to be shoulder to shoulder, as somebody <laughs> said here. I would certainly get that respect as our national art form. But it comes from a very different community. It's not going to leave the community. It's not going to leave the working class community. It's not going to leave the clubs. And we're not proposing that. But this is a very important thing to have happen for the respect for the, for the art form. And now the challenge is to keep it connected to the community. That's a challenge, of course, that's been very present on this side. But also, I think the responsibility is with the community too, to, be, to be open to it. Because there are, there is an element of closeness. People say, "Oh my gosh, that much money you could have created X amount of gigs for these little bands and the bars or whatever." And you know that'd be nice. That money would be spent and gone. But this is, I think, a, a huge step. But it's going to take acceptance, creativity, cooperation, the community chiming in, let it, let it be known how people feel about it, and an effort on both sides creatively to make it really the success that it deserves to be.